And so I would encourage any parent, be a model of courage for your family to just not run away from this. Don't numb yourself. Don't distract yourself. Just lean in. And I know from personal experience that while it is hard to go through that refiner's fire, right? But gold comes at the end. Why would a heart dad decide to host a podcast? Why would he write a book for the congenital heart defect community? What has this dad learned from having a child with a heart defect? Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna. I am not Anna Jaworski. I am Anna's husband, Frank, and I'm the guest host for Heart Dad Sundays in February 2023. Anna and I have an adult child with a single ventricle heart, and that's why I'm the guest host of this program. Today's show is Tom Hansen, Heart Dad podcaster and author, and our guest is Tom Hansen. Tom and Kat Hansen are parents to Audrey and Harding. In 2014, Harding was diagnosed with multiple congenital heart defects in utero, for which he has undergone three open heart surgeries and multiple other procedures. Inspired by their journey with Harding, Tom and his wife wrote a book, and they started a podcast, the Hope and Courage podcast for CHD parents, where they share their insights and interview experts and people with a lived experience of CHD. Their book, Hope and Courage, Real Life Lessons from the Parents of a Child with Congenital Heart Disease, was released in 2022. A former high school math teacher, Tom is currently a corporate trainer and instructional designer. Tom's family lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, and they enjoy going on adventures together. Loyal Heart to Heart with Anna listeners will remember Tom from his 2022 appearance with his wife on the show titled The Tomcat Team, Raising Awareness of Congenital Heart Defects. Welcome back to Heart to Heart with Anna, Tom Hansen. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Tom, it's nice to meet you, and I'm happy to talk to you today about your podcast and your book. But let's start by talking about Harding. In your bio, we learn that your wife and you found out about your son's congenital heart defect in utero. Can you tell me what it was like for you to discover you had a son with a heart defect already having a heart-healthy daughter? Yeah, absolutely. It was definitely a huge surprise, as I can imagine any parent who learns that at an ultrasound can tell you. But coming into it already with having a heart healthy kid, as you said, we came in feeling like we knew this whole experience. We knew how to do the ultrasounds. We knew what to expect. And we were coming in with a lot of expectations of not only that experience, but also what life was going to be like with the new child. I think the biggest thing that we were curious about was just learning the gender so we could nail down a good name and we could get the gender reveal party together, all of those things. But then when we got the news, it was obviously a blow and a shock. But one of the biggest things that I think we wrestled with, and I'm sure a lot of parents do, is you obviously do a lot of grieving and mourning in that moment. And one of the biggest things that you're grieving is the loss of normalcy, your expectations being not fulfilled right? You're having to reset all of your expectations and there's a ton of uncertainty there. And that's really challenging to work through. But yeah, we had a lot of great people surround us in the moment. We had a great ultrasound tech and we also went immediately to the children's hospital. And obviously our children's hospitals, as almost everyone are, and helped us through that. But it was definitely a struggle initially. Thomas, as a math teacher, you didn't really have any formal medical training, which would help you to be a dad to a son with a heart defect. But you had some time before your son was born to prepare. What did you and your wife do to prepare? Yeah, that's a great question. We tried to stay away from Google, and that was some advice that we got. That just, hey, don't go Googling heart conditions. And I was the one that broke that first. I got curious one day. I went looking. I found some very scary stuff, and that definitely shocked me. But it definitely scared me straight just to get all the information from the doctors and not try to go through an unfiltered source like Google to start getting information. And we obviously leaned into our doctors. I think for us, we really pendulumed back and forth during that time before the birth. We would go from what we called naive optimism. We would go, everything's going to be great. You know what? The doctors are wrong. We're going to defy all the odds and everything's going to be fine. And this is going to turn into a lifetime movie one day and it's going to be incredible. And then something would happen, we'd get some new information and we'd swing back to the other extreme and we would be 
paralyzed. We would just try to numb ourselves and ignore it and pretend like it wasn't going to happen. And I think what we really had to fight for, and we fought hard, and it wasn't easy, and we weren't always great at it, even to this day, is what Kat and I call informed optimism. Just that center piece where we're not running away from facts, we're not ignoring anything, but we are also really fighting hard to find that place of no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. There is going to be good that will come from this. And so we did that by supporting each other. We invested a lot in Audrey. Kat was really intentional about let's plan some fun adventure days just with Audrey and us as a family of three before Harding comes. And let's really be involved in our doctor's appointments, not just show up physically, but show up mentally with good questions and really getting the most that we can out of those resources. I like that very much. Working as a nurse myself and now as a nurse anesthetist in the hospital, I find that the patients and the families that are easiest to deal with are the ones that understand what's happening, but entirely aside from the intellectual knowledge, they have the optimism and the positive attitude that the parents have to have in general. So when you have one child in the hospital and another at home, it's hard to feel you're doing a good job for either of your children. That's my experience. How did you and Kat handle having a toddler and a newborn with a CHD in the hospital? Yeah, it definitely was not easy. And we had a great support system around us. Our families really rallied around us. We had a really strong community from our church and our neighborhood and my work that really leaned into us. And we were just blessed in that way to have that. But you're right. It's always a moving target. And it was really interesting. I think one of the most important things that we learned is just how different Kat and I were in terms of our personalities and how we deal with crisis and kids, right? We were just talking to a CHD parent last night and it's not like we would say this out loud, but the way I look back on it, it's almost like we would both be saying this phrase, that's my kid. And then I have expectations and I have a way of parenting my kid that are really important to me. But then Kat would be standing right next to me and her mind should be going, no, that's not your kid. That's my kid. And we wouldn't say that out loud, but it's almost like for me, I was definitely in the mindset of whatever Harding needs, he gets a hundred percent of us. If I've got to sleep on that floor, if I've got to take time off work, whatever I need to do, we need to do everything we possibly can. And Kat definitely was not against that, but her mindset was very much, we've got Audrey and she needs her mom and dad too. And we can't just throw her to the grandparents hundred percent. It was always this contention. And when we weren't at our best selves, sometimes it felt to me like, wait a minute, do you really care about Harding? Because if you did, you would be doing the things in my head that we should be doing. And then she'd be going, do you even care about Audrey? And that was where we had to fight hard. And that just takes good communication, just talk and just give each other the charitable assumptions. <laughs> like I'm just going to assume we're on the same team and our wires just cross. And we had to stop thinking that's my kid as an individual. And we had to really start thinking, this is our kid. These are our kids. And so once we got over those barriers, because man, it does cause some conflict, we really leaned into just, okay, let's look at this like you're bringing something unique and valuable to this partnership and you're bringing something unique and valuable to this partnership. Let's understand and appreciate what that is. Let's get good at self-awareness and knowing what I'm feeling and sharing that. And then we can really coordinate as a strong team. And I think we learned hard lessons early on, but as hospital stays extended and multiple procedures and surgeries, by the end, I think we were definitely clicking in that way. And that was really great. A similar thing happened to us. We learned from, as you said, multiple hospitalizations, different procedures, and your experience does you well when you come back to it later on, because then you find that you can communicate better, you know what to expect, and you work together better as a team. I like that very much. Tonight Forever by the Baby Blue Sound Collective. I think what I love so much about this CD is that some of the songs were inspired by the patients. Many listeners will understand many of the different songs and what they've been inspired by. Our new album will be available on iTunes, Amazon.com, Spotify. I love the fact that the proceeds from this CD are actually going to help those with congenital heart defects. Enjoy the music. Home Tonight Forever. 
This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The opinions expressed in the podcast are not those of Hearts Unite the Globe, but of the hosts and guests, and are intended to spark discussion about issues pertaining to congenital heart disease or bereavement. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Anna. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our show, please send an email to Anna Jaworski at Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. That's Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. Now, back to Heart to Heart with Anna. Before the break, we were talking about hearting and what it was like for you to become a dad to a son with a heart defect. Now let's talk about your podcast. I listened to episode 22 with Lauren and Matt and I was impressed with the idea of getting a tattoo to match your child's scar. Why did you decide to create a podcast? Yeah, it was when we went to write our book, we noticed that there was just a lack of great resources for the parents of children with congenital heart defects and disease, right? It is the most common birth defect. One in a hundred kids is born with some kind of congenital heart defect and they vary in range, right? Obviously. And there's great podcasts like yours, and we found things out there, but we just found that, and there's not enough, especially when you look at the other either disorders or diseases that might exist out in the world. And so for us, we really wanted to collect and aggregate stories and knowledge and insights from not only patients, parents, and medical specialists and doctors and nurses, really anyone in this field. They've got so much to share, and we just really wanted to be a place where we could just aggregate it all and put it there, and especially in such a way that it would bring about more hope and courage because we really feel like that's what parents need the most. It's what we needed the most, right? And so for us, we definitely approached this thing with the mindset of when we first got the news and when we were in the early stages what do we wish we had? What do we wish we had? What do we wish was out there for us? And let's try to create that. And it's been really great. We were just talking to a parent last night, and we've talked to so many different people from all walks of life, from all over the world and all over the country. And it is so interesting to me, and it never ceases to be interesting, that there are so many common through lines that the things that I went through and the things that I was thinking and the things that I was afraid of and the things that I wanted and needed are the same across the board for so many people. And so for us, the comfort of just knowing that if you're going through this, if you've got a child who has congenital heart disease, was born with a defect, if you're going through procedures, you are not alone. <laughs> like the things that you're feeling are common, are normal. There's a lot of people going through those. And man, our podcast is being this great opportunity for us to just connect with people and bring all that knowledge and insights together has been really great. Excellent. That's very much what Anna's been doing with her podcast too. It occurs to me, you were talking before about informed optimism. You know, the title of your book and the title of your podcast is Hope and Courage. And that's pretty much the definition of that because the hope comes from having information and knowing what's happening and the courage is your Absolutely. optimism. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. Now, I also listened to your heart to heart with Anna episode that you and your wife did. How does it feel to go on different podcasts to talk about Harding and your family as advocates for the CHD community? Yeah, it was so fun to do Heart to Heart with Anna. And, and again, there's been so many people in this world doing great things for many years. So it's been awesome for us to not only contribute in a small way to that movement, but just connect with people and collaborate and just bring synergy to our efforts has been really fun as well. It's been great. I'm a talker, if you can't tell. I like to talk. <laughs> and one of the things that is just a personal growth edge for me is uh, I'm trying to be a better listener and ask better questions. And the podcast really allows me to do that. But when I go on another podcast, I'm like, oh, this is me talking. At first I have this, am I talking too much? Maybe I should slow down. But I, it is really great to, in any way I can, to connect with other people in this field and encourage one another and share our experiences. It's been really awesome. Excellent. Your experience as a teacher is what brings that talking <laughs> out of you, that desire to communicate. Yeah. I know it takes a lot of effort from watching my wife do it. I don't help much with the podcast except for this month. But it takes a lot of effort to put together a podcast and to stick with it. 
what motivates you and Kat to keep podcasting? Yeah, I think just the incredible stories that we hear. One of the things we always ask our guests is if you could say one thing to a parent who maybe just got the news or is early in their journey, what would you say? So we've got that asked dozens and dozens of times. And every time I'm taking something away from it, it's just a great reminder for us just getting up and connecting. And it definitely is not easy. And I will admit too, Kat does most of the work. <laughs> she definitely is the driving force behind it, but we'll just eat some dinner. Okay. We're talking to this person and here's their story. And we go in our master closet and we lock the door and we hope that we get a quiet 30 minutes from the kids, but we get to have these great conversations. And yeah, it's been really cool. Like I said, the experience of Parenting a child with medical disabilities or complications is isolating and lonely. And to know that you're not alone, there's people feeling what you're feeling, and there's people who have gotten through it and are further along in the journey and can give you some help along the way, is just gold. It's amazing. I like what you said about going into the master bedroom closet to record. You have your own little sound space there. Anna has an office here at the house which we've prepared with the best soundproofing we can. <laughs> but when we travel sometimes, I know once we were on vacation and she said to me, I need to record this show, but I don't know where we can do it. None of the spaces in this Airbnb we were in were good enough. We wound up putting her in the closet. Yeah. And it worked out. So, yeah. I don't know what it is about closets, man. It's like kind of the perfect acoustic little area. It's a good sound space. It <laughs> is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anna Jaworski has written several books to empower the congenital heart defect, or CHD, community. These books can be found at Amazon.com or at her website, www.babyheartspress.com. Her bestseller is The Heart of a Mother, an anthology of stories written by women for women in the CHD community. Anna's other books, My Brother Needs an Operation, The Heart of a Father, and Hypoplastic Left Heart Syndrome, a handbook for parents will help you understand that you are not alone. Visit babyheartspress.com to find out more. Heart to Heart with Anna is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to uplift, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at www.congenitalheartdefects.com for information about CHD, the hospitals that treat children with CHD, summer camps for CHD survivors, and much, much more. Tom, in the second segment, we were talking about your podcast. In this segment, let's talk about your book. There are so many people who talk about writing a book, but not many follow through and actually do it. What motivated you to write and publish your book? It definitely was a big goal for us. It was two years ago that we started writing it. And I was out on a run and something just hit me. Man. We should write a book about our experience with Harding. And I think that really was birthed out of this idea that Kat and I have really fought for that informed optimism position of just believing that there is going to be good from this experience, that it's going to be for the good of us and others that we went through this. And the book is definitely an extension of that, of just saying, okay, what we went through was really hard, but it gave us things that are incredibly valuable that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. That is one of the tragic exchanges of hardship, right? It is hard to go through and you would not willingly do it, right? If I had a magic wand and I could take away Harding's congenital heart disease, would I do it? A hundred percent without a second thought, I would do it, right? Was Harding having congenital heart disease and going through that the quote unquote best thing that ever happened to us? Absolutely not. Oh, no, no way. But did the experience of going through it and persevering through it and coming out the other side make us better, make Harding better? Yes, it did. It gave us things, insights and knowledge and growth that we couldn't have gotten otherwise. So the book was really 
let's make sure we document those things really well. And I think that was part of it too. It was almost like this selfish, let's really sit down. And after we got through the third open heart surgery, things for us calmed down and let's just live. But we were getting a couple years removed from that. And we just said, you know what, let's go back. We went through all the Facebook posts, all the journal entries, everything, just to say, what did this experience give us and how could our experience benefit other people out there? All right, a book is the best way to deliver that. Let's get it out there to the world. That's great. You use the word selfish, but I don't think there's any selfishness in that at all. I think what you're trying to do is share, like you said, you know, what you've gone through. And as you said, as we experienced also, there weren't enough resources for you when you first went through it. And Googling, like you said, it's an unfiltered source. There weren't enough resources. And so you're trying to provide sources that people can use that are more valuable. And that's the best you can possibly do with your experience. Yeah, thank you. Now, I've learned so many lessons by being a father. The title of your book is Hope and Courage, Real Life Lessons from the Parents of a Child with Congenital Heart Disease. But I'm wondering if you can share a lesson you've learned as a heart dad that isn't in your book. Yeah, that's a great question. We started writing the book two years ago, almost to the day. And this was one of the biggest lessons I've learned. I thought when you write a book, you just can sit down and you write it. But no, you write it once and then you rewrite it a hundred times. <laughs> And in most writing is rewriting. And I learned that lesson and that was a valuable lesson to learn. But when we wrote the book, it was two years ago and it was really our experience with Harding up to that point. He was in kindergarten. He's a few years removed from his last surgery, doing well, doing great, still doing very well. And since then though, a lot has changed. Now he's in second grade and he's a little older. And it's funny, once we wrote the book and then it was just like in a time capsule and we were just rewriting it, refining it, refining it, a lot had changed. And by the time we published it, we have an eight-year-old second grader. It was a little different than our experiences, mostly from birth through surgeries. And it was so funny. And one of the first questions we got was, how do you talk to Harding about it? And that was not something we put in the book because our experience was very much like him through toddler and kind of preschool years. But now it is something that we have to do quite a lot. We have to talk to them about it. And also it's a conversation starter when there is a book about his experience sitting on a shelf and he's like, there's a book. So I would say the biggest lesson we learned is now getting into these school age years, how do you talk to him about it, about his experience? And how do we get him in that mindset of informed optimism where he doesn't run away from the facts, but also isn't traumatized by the experience. And for us, the way I would describe it is it takes a Goldilocks approach to it. We can't focus on it too much. We can't focus on it too little. It's got to be just right. And for us, we found that it was a little challenging when he got this book because his quote unquote special heart really made him feel special and valuable. And we love that, but we have to spend a lot of time trying to share with him now, that's not the only thing that makes you special and valuable. You're also funny and you're smart and you're kind and we work through all of those things. But then we still have to get regular doctor's visits and we want to inform him and he draws his own medicine and does all the things. We're always trying to find that kind of Goldilocks sweet spot of talking about it, not talking about it too much, educating him, not overwhelming him, making sure that He's taking as much ownership of his care as age appropriate. And I would say we weren't quite there yet when we wrote the book, but we're definitely living it now. And I hope that maybe we can share that in a later resource or book or something. Absolutely. That's one of the things you said there is that parents have everything else they have to teach their kids about and deal with their kids about the other aspects of their personality and their lives. But parents of children with heart defects or other chronic health problems have to do things that other parents don't really understand. They have to deal with real life issues, life and death and scary issues. And it adds a different element than what you said about talking about it enough, but not too much. That's a fine balance and it varies from family to family and child to child. So could you tell our listeners how they can get a copy of your book? Yeah, so the book is on Amazon. It's amazon.com, hope and courage, six life lessons of a child with congenital heart disease is the best place. You could also go to tomandkathanson.com. That's cat with a K, tomandkathanson.com. We've developed other resources. You get a link to our podcast and encourage you to check both of those out, especially if you're a parent of a child with congenital heart disease or 
no a parent or your grandparent or anything like that. What piece of advice would you want to share with other heart dads that you wish you would have done before Harding was born? Yeah, it was funny. We do talk about this in the book, and we might have shared this with Anna the first time we talked. When Harding was born and he was getting ready for his first surgery, we're talking a week old. And so we're at that crucial point where we have to hand him off to the doctors for the first time, which is never easy for any parent. And I don't try to compare experiences. I don't care if your kid's getting tubes in their ears. It's not easy to hand off your kid to a doctor for a procedure. And this is the first time of many times that we had to do that. And as we were doing that, or struggling to do it, actually, not really hadn't got up the courage to do it yet. One of the doctors approached us with his phone and he just said, hey, I want to show you something. And he handed his phone and I was a little confused at first, but looking at it, there was a picture of a child sitting in a high chair with a birthday cake in front of him, a big chocolate birthday cake with icing. And he was tearing into it. He had chocolate all over his face, all over his hands, on his hair. And he just smiling and having a good time. It just seemed like a perfect baby on a perfect day, which was odd to see on this day when we were about to do what we were about to do. And then the doctor said, that's my son on his first birthday. And he had the same procedure that Harding's about to have. And it was exactly the right help at the right time. It's exactly what we needed. And for so long, I think I wanted to just see a kid who did it. No kid's the same, right? Every experience is going to be different. No one heart defect is the same as the other. They're like snowflakes. So I understood that. But I just wanted to know that it was possible. I share that story just to say what I would say to any parent or dad about this experience is it's going to be very hard. It's not going to be easy is possible to get through it. And no matter what happens, you can get something great out of this experience. Your kid is stronger than you could ever imagine. You're going to have to make a lot of decisions. You're going to have to support. You're going to have to serve. And for me, I think all of that has to come from a place of hope and courage. And so I would encourage any parent, any dad out there to just believe that it's possible for good to come and have hope and to be a model of courage for your family to just not run away from this. Don't numb yourself. Don't distract yourself. Just lean in. And I know from personal experience that while it is hard to go through that refiner's fire, right? But gold comes at the end. And if you believe that and can model that for your kid and for your partner or spouse, then I think you can do the best thing you can for them doing that. Tom, thank you very much for coming on the program today. Yeah, thank you. Love doing it. Appreciate you having me. It's a pleasure. So that concludes this episode of Heart to Heart with Anna. Thanks for listening today. If you enjoy listening to this episode, please consider becoming a patron. Just go to www.patreon.com slash heart to heart and pledge a monthly amount to support our program. It only takes a few minutes to make a big difference. For the cost of a pizza, you can help us continue to provide great programming for the CHD community. Have a great day. And remember, my friends, you are not alone. Thank you again for joining us this week. We hope you have become inspired and empowered to become an advocate for the congenital heart community. Heart to Heart with Anna with your host, Anna Jaworski, can be heard at any time, wherever you get your podcasts. A new episode is released every Tuesday from noon Eastern time.